So this is our friend, the hickory tree, and it's a young tree now. Someday it'll be 80 feet tall. So what do you do? What are you looking at when, when, you, when you assess this, this particular tree? We talked about the importance of lower branches. And so these branches are, are fulfilling a useful function, but someday you're gonna to wanna to take them off because they'll be at this current height for the rest of the tree's life, and someday they might get in the way. So we leave them on when the tree is young because they help develop stem taper, they help develop roots, but we have our eye on them and we're going to take them off uh, in, in due time. So when I stand back and look at the tree, and that's the first, my first look at it from a distance, is I want to see about two-thirds of the tree in branches. And of course I want to keep that, that proportion up for the entire life of, of the plant. So we have some branches here that probably could come off, but the one I want to focus on is the one on the other side of the tree. It's a little bit larger. Remember, one of the things we, we worry about with, with pruning is if we make too large of a pruning cut, too large of a wound, it takes longer for that wound to close. And so I'm going to focus on those branches that probably should, should come off uh, sooner than later. So for example, this is a large branch, and, and if you notice, it's been kind of beaten up a little bit, so it's probably a prime candidate for removal. And again, we're talking about a very good time to make pruning cuts during, during the dormant season. So I'd like to demonstrate how I might remove this branch. Now it's a large branch, uh, and, and the, the size of the, of the branch is about two inches, and that's about maximum size. So it's, it's really time this branch comes off. You'll notice we're gonna leave its three buddies in place, gra gradually taking them off, but not all at the same time. Remember, we don't wanna over prune the, over prune the tree. So to remove a branch that has some size to it, I like to make a, make a three cut technique uh, and, and it works, works really well. So my first cut, really kind of counterintuitively, is about 12 inches out from the main stem on the bottom side of the branch. And I go about a third of the way through the branch. Like that. My next cut is on the top side of the branch, but out or away from the trunk, uh, right, about, right about there. Now you might wonder why I'm doing this. Well, if you've ever pruned a branch and, it, and the weight of the branch began to rip down the side of the tree, it could rip all the way back to the main stem. So this undercut will, will prevent the branch from ripping. And with any luck, this will work like a champ. And it didn't rip this time, so that, that's a good thing. But notice, had it, had it begun to rip, it would have stopped at that, at that undercut. It's really a good fail-safe uh, technique. So the final cut is made close to the trunk, but not too close. We tend, we, we look for a couple of landmarks when making pruning cuts. I always prune to the outside of the branch bark ridge, and I also prune to the outside of something called a collar. It's a little bit hard to see on this tree, but this is tissue that actually is from the trunk that grows out around the branch. So we call this the collar, this is the branch bark ridge, and we always make our pruning cuts to the outside of both of those landmarks and we try to angle the cut so it mirrors the angle of the branch bark ridge. I think this, has been a, this is a pretty good cut. One way to check your work is to come back in a year or two and hopefully if you've made a good cut, you'll have a complete ring, a donut of callus tissue that encircles that wound. If you get that complete donut circling that wound, it means you've done a good job. You haven't gotten too close. Back in the old days, we used to, we used to advocate flush cutting. That is, you would get as close to the main stem as you could. We now realize that was a flawed policy because by doing so, we, we injure some tissue and also might cause decay to form in the main tree. So this is the way a proper printing cut should look after the fact. Again, there's no reason to treat it with any kind of printing paints. Uh, just let it go and the tree will handle the rest from here on out.